My name is Avi Loeb. I'm the Frank B. Bird uh, Junior Professor of Science at Harvard University, the Chair of the Astronomy Department at Harvard, and the Director of the Institute for Theory and Computation here. This is my story. I was born in 1962 uh, in a small village in Israel called Beit Hanan, uh, about 20 minutes drive from Tel Aviv. Back then in the 60s, we didn't have TVs. We got a television in 1967. It used to be a very relaxing lifestyle in the village, in, working in the farm on a daily basis. I used to work in the fields, uh, collect eggs uh, every afternoon. Uh, I used to drive a tractor. On weekends, I would go to the hills next to my village to read philosophy books, uh, which uh, were my favorite. I could have continued working in the farm until now, except that uh, intellectual work seemed to be more appealing to me. Around 1979, the Israeli Defense Forces decided to develop a new program called Talpiot, aiming to recruit the very best uh, minds to research related uh, work for the defense of, of the country of Israel. I was fortunate to be able to apply to an elite program that selects 20 to 30 uh, people every year uh, out of thousands that uh, are recruited. They invited me to join the program uh, to be one out of these 25 people. That was very interesting and very challenging, uh, being in an elite group of bright young physicists and uh, competing with them. Uh, so we started training. We parachuted, we drove tanks, we went to the Navy. We did all of the Army training. And at the same time, we finished the first uh, degree in physics and math. We studied at uh, the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, wearing uniform uh, and being taught but by the best uh, professors at the university. That was an unusual experience to come from military training straight to the classroom. I was uh, studying on campus while wearing the Air Force uniform. We had the paratrooper symbol on our chest and officer marks on our shoulders. And that made us unique, sort of like uh, penguins uh, walking on ice, uh, very distinct from the background. In 1983, I received a bachelor's degree in physics and mathematics from the Hebrew University. And uh, I liked uh, physics so much that I wanted to pursue research uh, rather than technology development, applied uh, physics. And so I proposed a project at the Sorek Nuclear Research Center that would allow me to do research. And the project was in plasma physics, which became the topic for my PhD thesis. And I finished my PhD two years later at the age of 24, the first in the Talpio program to receive a PhD. During the end of my military service, I met uh, Marshall Rosenbluth, who was a prominent uh, plasma physicist, the most prominent, the Pope in plasma physics in the US at the time. And he was very impressed with the research I do and recommended that I visit Princeton, the Institute for Advanced Study, where Einstein was a faculty member many years before. When I arrived to Princeton, it was a complete culture shock. Not only the vocabulary that was being used by astronomers was foreign to me, the language itself, English, was not my native language. And so I had to get used to speaking with other people uh, in a culture that is somewhat different on a topic of research that is challenging, surrounded by extremely bright people that are trying to prove that they're much smarter than I am. And so uh, it was not easy to survive that environment. I didn't know some generic uh, words that are being used by the astronomers. I didn't even know how the sun shines. So I had to learn all the vocabulary and all the details. I had to basically invent myself, find out research areas that would be of interest. When I applied to faculty positions, I was accepted to three places, one of which was Harvard. Arriving to the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics uh, was very fortunate for me because here there was a very intellectually rich environment with a lot of people doing different aspects of astrophysics. There are researchers from a diverse set of backgrounds 
working under the umbrella of the Center for Astrophysics, some of which belong to the Smithsonian institutions, some of which belong to Harvard University, but they work in the same environment and collaborate on research. And the diversity of personalities and researchers is the richest that there is in astrophysics worldwide. It's a great privilege to work in this environment. Or I think that addressing fundamental questions in science requires original points of view. And you don't get that if everyone does the same thing, looks the same, and uh, has the same gender. If you have a diverse set of people, often they think differently about a problem. Um, people that uh, are always afraid of what others might think about them are not innovating. People that are afraid of making mistakes are not innovating. People that want to resemble other people are not innovating. And so I'm trying to create around me an environment that tolerates mistakes, tolerates ideas that are out of the box, that are not in the same framework as other people have defined. They think that, in fact, it would improve their prospects for getting a job if they were to simply um, follow the mainstream research along the lines that one of the more senior colleagues defines. And one of my main goals is to persuade them otherwise. Because the innovation of the future will come from the young people of today.